Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec and this is my channel Alec Reads. Um, today we are reading I Still Think You're Beautiful um, on Wattpad. Um, once again, this is a trigger warning series where I just like to put an overall trigger warning. It has to do with PTSD, mental health problems, um, self-harming, um, and along with those things, there are also mentions of blood, in-depth descriptions of anxiety attacks and panic attacks. Um, so if those are not your vibe, uh, just click off the video and make sure to take care of yourself um, so that um, you can stay healthy. Um, I am trying to post other things so that people who have problems with these things don't have to have none of my content so i will be posting a book very soon um instead of a fan fiction so that i can have something for everyone so please enjoy the extra ones on top and gave her a smile thanks have you seen potter today i haven't he hasn't been in any of my classes she gave me a strange look as if she was listing all of the possibilities in her head i'm sure he was just wanting a day off to himself I sighed. But all day? I didn't even see him this morning. We stopped just before the doors. Well, if he doesn't show up in your room, then you can go look for him, can't you? Why would I want to look for him? Draco, you're being a bit obvious. She leaned against the wall for support. About what? That you like him. Harry's too shy even for a Gryffindor. When it comes to relationships, I think you should make the first move, but I couldn't object as she walked into the Great Hall. So I followed and sat next to Basley, unaware of the boy lying unconscious on the Quidditch pitch. We finished the feast and went back to our rooms. He wasn't there. The room was empty. His school books were on his bed and his trunk was open. His wand laid next to it. Where could he be? Where would he go? I went to the room of requirement and he wasn't there. I had about 20 minutes until I had to be in my room. I wandered about the castle for a while, head throbbing, stomach churning. I didn't even realize I'd walked into someone. Oh, Professor McGonagall, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. She brushed her robes and smiled. It's quite all right, Mr. Malfoy, though I have to ask why you're not in your room. I shifted on the spot. Um, well, I haven't seen Potter. Harry, that is, all day, and he isn't in our room, so I thought I should go looking for him, as he couldn't have hurt himself. My he headmistress nodded. Very admirable of you, Draco, but you should have informed a teacher if he's been missing for over 12 hours. Where did you last see him? Last night, in our dorm. I left out the part of what exactly happened. Did he sleep in the room? I nodded. Come with me. I followed her back to my dorm, and she asked me to get Weasley whilst she went to get Granger. We went back to the common room. What's going on? What's he doing here? Weasel snarled at me. Ron, Granger said, glaring. Harry is missing, I said, which got me a look from the weasel. I haven't seen him since last night. Well, maybe he's just avoiding you. I mean, it is you, Weasley said. Have you seen him? Weasley shook his head at the professor's question. Right, get dressed. I will inform some teachers as to this current predicament. Don't worry, Miss Granger. We'll find him. As I was already dressed, I just waited in the common room for the other two. We then walked to the headmistress's office together in extremely awkward silence. Okay, we will search the whole castle. Ron and Hermione, you can take the third floor. Professor Flitwick can take the seventh floor and work your way down. Hagrid, you can search outside and the Forbidden Forest, though I don't know why he would go there. 
Draco, you can search the Owlery and anywhere else outside. I nodded, and we all split off, wanting to find him as quick as we could. My wand in my pocket, I headed up the steps to the Owlery. There was only one owl in there. Tanny Brown. Its great eyes looking into me. I looked around the small place, and he wasn't there. From high up, I could see most of Hogwarts. The Quidditch pitch wasn't far away, and in the moonlight, I could make out a broom in the air, extremely high in the air, with no one on it. I looked below it, but couldn't see as the moonlight didn't reach that far. So I raced down the steps and over to the pitch. I strolled in and looked up to the broom still there. On the ground lay Harry. I couldn't have gotten to him fast enough. He laid on his back, his head bleeding badly, his arm at an awkward angle. How long had he been like this? I touched his hand. He was deathly cold, barely breathing, but still breathing. I grabbed my my wand out of my pocket, panting ferociously, squeezing Harry's hand, begging him to be okay. Perincium, I shouted, and red sparks flew into the air. I started sobbing. His breathing was slowing down. Hurry up. In a couple of minutes, Hagrid ran over and picked Harry up, just like before. I accruciated his broom from the sky, dragging it along behind Hagrid. We reached the hospital wing as McGonagall, Weasley, and Granger ran in. Hagrid laid down on one of the beds. What happened? Where was he? Granger asked. The Quidditch field. He was on the floor. His broom was about 40 feet in the air, maybe higher. Granger rubbed my back as I looked at her surprisingly. She gave me a smile, which I returned, and then ran over to Harry, who already had Weasley by his side. I felt extremely uncomfortable. Madame Pomfrey asked us all to leave, as it was very late and she had to see if he was okay. He obviously wasn't. Broken arm, no dislocated arm, and a broken wrist. She'd stopped the cut in his head from bleeding. I looked back as we walked out. He was almost the same color as the bed sheets. Don't worry, Mr. Malfoy. It couldn't have been worse. I smiled and carried on. Walking, my face dripping as I left. I'd visit him tomorrow and every day after that, just to make sure he's okay. Chapter 8. Harry. My feet had barely any noise on the cobblestone of Hogwarts. My nightmares always happened here. It was like reliving that day all over again, watching people die in front of me. Colin, Lavender. I go to the Great Hall. Tonks, Ramus, Fred. But there's no one else, only the people who died on the floor, lying still, and me. I'm alive. Why? Why do I get to survive this? When all I've brought people is pain. This is all my fault. I walked out of the Great Hall and go to the bridge. Looking over the edge, I lean forward. The pain in my head is indescribable. I couldn't feel my back. My eyes shuddered open and I blink a few times. Leaning over, I put on my glasses. The room came into focus and I saw that I was... In the hospital wing, Malfoy was sat in a chair by my bed, asleep. A book rested on his chest. My head started to be unbearable as I moaned in pain. Malfoy woke up. Harry, you're awake. What's wrong? He got up and put his book away. I'll get Madame Pomfrey. Good morning, Harry. What's wrong? My head really hurts. She nodded. Yes, you did fall 50 feet. 
your head will hurt for a bit. Here, drink this. The pain immediately eased away as I drank the vial she handed me. What happened? I can't remember. I closed my eyes, letting the headache go away. You were on your broom, and you fell off, Malfoy said. Why was he here? I remember going to the pitch, having a nightmare. How did you fall off? There was no one else there, and the broom stayed in the air. Malfoy asked. I fell asleep. I must have, when I woke up. There was no point in telling them about my nightmare. Right then, does it hurt anywhere else? Can you sit up for me? Madame Pomfrey asked. I tried, but I couldn't. The small of my back burned with pain. I couldn't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. My back really hurts. Madame Pomfrey nodded, but her face had paled. Right, let me see what I can do. She waved her wand over me and nodded again, muttering to herself, or so I thought. I felt a quick tug on my back and then an anonishing snap. I screamed in pain. Malfoy looked at me cautiously. There. Now I want you to rest, and you can be out of here in a couple of days. And with that, she walked away to attend to some girl who had walked in. You okay? Malfoy asked. I'm fine. Why are you here, though? I looked straight at him, his gray eyes glazed back. I was bored, and I just wanted to see if you were right. I nodded, processing all this. Why do you care, though? You don't like me. We hate each other. He looked hurt by that. By what I said. And for once, didn't try to mask it. Maybe I do care. Maybe I'm willing to put all of this behind us. So what's your calling a truce? The blonde boy nodded and held out his hand. I laughed, thinking back to first year and shook his hand. His hand was soft. Obviously, never done any hard labor, but he smiled at me as I moved my hand up and down. I let go and put my hands in my lap, remembering the night before last. He knows. I'm sure he wouldn't have spread it around school. He's changed. What are you thinking about? None of your business, I sighed. I desperately needed something to calm my nerves. Nothing special, I said again. Do you want me to get you anything? You know, from our room? I nodded and told him what I wanted as he sped off to our dorm. In a few minutes, he came back with a small bag and my wand. Thanks, I said, taking them from his hands. I opened the bag and got out a small box and placed a cigarette to my lips, lighting it with my wand. I leaned back onto the bed feeling instantly calmer. You know, that's a really bad habit. You really shouldn't smoke. And what's your point? I wasn't in the mood. My headache was coming back. It's great that we have called the truth and everything, but I just wanted him to leave. I just wanted some space. Okay, calm down. He held up his hands and rolled his eyes. Why are you still here? No offense, but shouldn't you be in class? He shook his head. Free period. Great. I was stuck with him. And you couldn't be doing anything else in your time than wasting it with me? I was reading and doing homework. Like I said before, I wanted to make sure you're okay. I eased down onto the bed. My cigarette put out. I began to close my eyes. Sorry, Malfoy. Not that you're not entertaining or anything, but I'm just really tired. I heard him picking up his stuff. All right, I'll leave you to it. Finally. Though it felt nice that someone cared. Bye, Malfoy. Bye, Potter. He said, sighing. Why was he sighing? I opened my eyes to watch him leave. 
his trousers tied around his waist, perfectly framing his legs and lower body. I smirked a little, realizing I was staring at his ass. I closed my eyes again. No, I can't. Not with Malfoy. It's Malfoy. Ron would have my head. He still doesn't know I'm gay. Only Hermione knows. I hope she hasn't told anyone. She wouldn't tell anyone. Would she? My thoughts were interrupted when Hermione and Ron came running in and hugged me as my eyes opened. Hey, I said to Ron. Hey, you all right, mate? I nodded. You look like shit, he laughed. Ron, honestly. How are you, Harry? Did Madame Pomfrey get you anything for your headaches? I nodded, still laughing from Ron's comment. What actually happened on the Quidditch pitch? Ron asked. To be honest, I fell asleep on my broom. Hermione started to giggle, as did Ron. I was tired, okay? I hadn't been sleeping great lately. I laughed as well and swallowed back a tear as my ribs decided to put me in agony. I didn't want to ruin the moment, so I ignored it. And that is the end of chapter seven. No, eight. Yes, chapter eight. Um, and so with the end of chapter seven, I do want to make a couple little notes. Um, I am trying to get a new mic. I know that the recordings have been so unbelievably bad, but my mic broke and I couldn't fix it quite yet. Um, so just bear with me. I will be getting a new mic. Um, I am working really hard. So anyway, um, like, subscribe, leave down in the comments if you have any recommendations. Love you all. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and goodbye, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between. Love you.